everyone, this is Sasha bringing you a video tutorial today from BP for You. And so today we are going to put all of those um, awesome concepts that you have learned about Photoshop Elements um, to some good use. We are going to edit this photo. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up, I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to check out my histogram. So my histogram here, as we talked about with levels, is showing me my blacks over here, my middle gray, and my whites. I can see that I have, because there is this climbing up this wall here, you see how it kind of climbs up? I can see that I have some blown highlights. The blown highlights are these areas right in here, and I'm not too worried about that because I know that they are only blown because they're behind the trees and they're not affecting my photo quality any I don't feel. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm going to grab a brightness or contrast adjustment layer. And so I'm gonna add a little bit of brightness to my photo and I'm gonna sort of watch my histogram as I do that. Because I could see from my histogram I did have some room to work because I'm focusing on my skin tones. And I think right about there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add some contrast until I think that that looks good. Right around here. So I can turn that off and back on and I might actually pull that down just a little bit so that I can make sure that I'm keeping his arm good. And I think that looks pretty good. So the next adjustment layer that I'm going to add is a hue and saturation layer and I'm going to drop this down and grab my yellows and I'm going to change the hue of my yellows just a little bit and then I'm going to boost the saturation and so you can see the before and the after on that as much as these boxes will let you so here you can see oops not that one you can see the before and the after on that and I love what it does to the trees I actually pull it just a little bit more there we go so then let the next one I'm gonna grab here is a photo filter and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna leave the settings as they are and so you can see here as I click that now there is also this preserve, preserve luminosity button um, this is going to keep the brightness of my photo the same as it is on my background layer here and so you can decide whether you want to keep that on or off and you can see the little um, the change in the look that you get from doing that I actually think I'm gonna turn it off so I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna duplicate my background layer that way I can merge these four layers here together and get a good idea of what my before and after is going to look like. So I just press Control Shift and then I clicked on this top layer, Command Shift on a Mac, and Control E, E like elephant, is going to merge all of those onto my duplicated background layer so that I can get a before and an after. And so you can see here that now I have got this awesome before and after. So I'm going to go ahead now and I want to sharpen my picture. And so I'm going to use this navigator window here to pull this in and then I'm going to grab this box here and use that to navigate up to the boy. And so there was a sharpening option over here in my quick my quick edit mode here and so I'm just gonna kind of drag this and it's frozen give it just a second because we are not responding okay here we go I'm just going to kind of drag this over just a little bit so that I can see the sharpening here the reason why I can zoom in is because I can see what I'm doing 
and I don't have to worry about um, am I over sharpening, am I under sharpening, um, am I making my picture too noisy or too grainy. Um, those questions can be answered. So I'm actually just going to pull it back just a smidge and I'm happy with that so I'm just going to go ahead and click that check mark and that is going to add the effect. I can come back over here to full mode and I can zoom back out and I can actually go ahead and just click fit screen here and that takes care of that. So here I've got my before and my after. Now that I am happy with that I can go ahead and I'm going to press control shift and I'm going to click on my background layer and control E is going to merge those for me. And I'm going to go ahead and close this box. So now my picture is ready to be saved. Now if I would have wanted to, I could have left all of my layers open and went ahead and saved my picture as a PSD file with all of those layers still open. The advantage of that would be if I were to come back into Photoshop later or happen to look at that picture later and say, oh man, I wish I would have clicked that preserve luminosity box. My picture would be just a little bit brighter right now and I really wish I would have that. Well, um, you would be able to open that picture file back up and instead of having to reapply your entire edit all over again, um, except for checking that box, you could go ahead and just open up the PSD file and check that box and you could save it all over again. Now I have my pictures smushed onto a background layer. Um, I went ahead and I flattened my image, therefore it wouldn't make sense for me to save this as a PSD. Um, the PSD supports is great for supporting um, photographs that have multiple layers that you're wanting to preserve all of those layers for. With my PSD file, I cannot share that anywhere. So I couldn't post a PSD file to a social media platform to share with my friends. Um, the only program that supports PSD files is Photoshop and Photoshop Elements. Adobe, Adobe, um, Adobe products. <clears throat> so I would want to save this as a JPEG. And so I would go up here to File save as. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this as a copy button. That way um, I'm not saving over top of my original file. If I wanted to go back and have that original file because I hated my edit later, um, my client wanted something changed, a number of things could happen. I would have the original still right here for me to go ahead and grab to edit. Um, of course you could save the JPEG without saving it as a copy because you have that PSD option and you have already saved it as a PSD and that's totally a personal preference. You could also just rename the entire file to a different file name um, and your original would still be there intact as well which is also another option. So when I was happy with this edit I could just go ahead and click save. Um, right now it's defaulting my quality to 10 and I'm just going to pull that up to 12 and I'm going to click OK and that is how I save a picture. Now the last um, saving method that is common is a PNG and a PNG file is generally used for saving things with transparent backgrounds. So if you hear somebody say that they have a PNG file most likely they have something that has a transparent background. Our photo does not have a transparent background. We have um, one layer here and it is the whole picture and it consumes the entire canvas. So if I was saving a watermark though to be placed over top of my photos or over top of um, or to, to upload onto my blog then a PNG file would be right for me. So I actually have one, so I can go ahead and I can go to File and Open. And I saved it in my music folder because that was 
one of the only empty folders that I have. Here we go. So here I have my PNG file. And again, it's not responding for just a second. So just give it a second to load. Here we go. Oops. So in order to place that on my picture, I should have went to file place and I'll show you that in just a second. So this is a transparent background. Um, it's got this checkerboard behind it. We're on a layer zero, not a locked background layer. And when I go ahead and I pull this over and I place it on top of my picture, that checkerboard background did not follow. There, we can see it. That checkerboard background did not follow, just the black outline did. And you can see um, that we can see everything behind it. Now if I go up here to File and Place, and I grab that JPEG file. Now it's the same file but this one is a JPEG file. Um, it was taken from the exact same, this was saved right from this, but this was saved as instead of a PNG file, it was saved as a JPEG file. And so you can see now that because it was saved as a JPEG, even though there is no white background over here, it has to have a background in order to read it correctly. And so if I were to upload this to um, my blog or try to use this as a watermark on my picture you can see that that's not going to work because it's going to have that very unprofessional looking white background so delete that and this is the one that we really like and this is the one that we would want to keep and that is a PNG file so thank you for watching my video tutorial and happy editing everyone